What a beautiful day it is to work outside. It was literally 75 degrees the past couple days. So, since the weather is trash today, I figured I'll do a video that I've been requested to do by several people now. I'm gonna do a build overview of my car and yeah, go over all the modifications that I've done to it. I'm gonna pull it away from the wall and get these wheels off so I can get the suspension visible and move my editing studio quick. So I actually did a video like this like over a year ago, but I only had like 20 subscribers at the time. And I think it was like the first YouTube video I actually tried to make, like besides just doing stupid video edits. But yeah, so a lot has kind of changed on the car since then. And my videoing, I feel like has gotten a little better. So I'm gonna walk you through the car. I'm gonna start with just telling you how the car was when I got it and then kind of go from there modification wise. And at the end of the video, I will go over the list of modifications I still have to do to the car and future plans for it. And if you want stickers, I will show those at the end of the video and how to get them as well. So when I got the car, it was basically bone stock. My buddy bought the car and he just had it sitting for years. Eventually he threw um, Skunk 2 Pro Series coilovers on it and the Skunk 2 cat back, which that's the fart can off of. And that was it. Like, it was a completely stock car. And EFs are my favorite cars. It was like, my first car was a 91 EF hatch as well. And I begged them for like three years to sell me the car because it was just sitting there in a shop. And finally, he sold it to me one day and I was happier than a fat kid in a candy store. So my initial plan for the car before any of this happened was to basically just leave it stock as a nice, clean daily drive. Well, clean minus the rust, but just a simple daily driver I could enjoy, full interior, and so on. But from sitting in his shop, it had a lot of mold in the interior, and I was like, you know, I tried cleaning it out. I actually paid someone to um, detail the interior, and then like my carpet wouldn't dry throughout the winter either, and the mold just came back. On um, like even even the plastics on the interior had mold coming out of them, and I was just like, you know what, this thing is gross, and. Um, I'm just sick of not being able to pass minivans, so that's when the B16 swap came about. So we'll start with under the hood. This is a JDM B16 out of an EG6 I got from H Motors Online. I also got the transmission from them. It's a Type R transmission out of either, I can't remember if it was an Integra or a Civic, honestly. I'd have to look it up. It's been a while, but yeah. Also have a innovative cable to hydro conversion, which works very well. This is an older version of it and it didn't come with lock washers so if you do run it then or if you do buy it and want to run it in your car I suggest using lock washers for all the bolts because I had it come apart on me once but since I did that not a problem ever since that I beat the crap out of this car. So bolt on stuff 1320 header it's a 4 to 1 header I'm going to change it out eventually because it sits way too low on the car but it's what I could find at the time that would clear the radiator in the block because ES are kind of really tight because the engine base is smaller than like an EG or an Integra or an EK. So yeah, Type R intake manifold I got from my buddy Hunter to a cold air intake that I made. I actually have a video on that if you want to see that as well. That goes to this little duct I made and yeah, straight cold air from the front of the car. I'm going to modify this a little bit in the future to make it a little bigger, but they'll be down the road. And I do have a catch can on the car just to kind of keep the oil cleaner and all that stuff, just science. But it also cleaned up the back of the firewall as well, getting rid of all the um, PCV stuff and whatnot. So while we're talking about the engine and stuff, I'll just go through the exhaust quick. So it was a 1320 header to actually a 1320 test pipe. 
and then this is the rest of that skunk to exhaust from the cat back to a custom pipe my buddy Aaron made for me which is just this simple pipe at the end the reason I did this is well for one sticking to the true Kanjo style and it also cut a lot of weight because the factory exhaust on a EF goes down that way and then out the other side and I actually cut like 10 or 20 pounds from that muffler and I'm using a P28 ECU with a Honda S300 chip with a AM AFR gauge which we wired into the ECU so you can data log and tune the vehicle. So one of the other things I get asked about a lot is the tune on the car. The car was street tuned by my brother and I. Um, it's fairly easy, especially with Honda Ada software and just being a basic NA engine, it's just a simple stock engine basically. But a lot of people also ask, why did you tune a stock motor? So when you get into modifying like the header, getting rid of a catalytic converter, you're Stock ECU will run the car way too rich, so you're not getting the amount of power out of the vehicle that you should, and you're also just contaminating your oil with fuel. So basically what we did, without getting too far into the rabbit hole of tuning, because I'm not a professional whatsoever at it either, but what we did was upload a stock V16 fuel map to the Honda S300, and then tune the car off of there, like backing fuel off, and then fixing any blips in the graph with running a different intake and all that, which technically I still have to retune the car now, to be perfect since I did the um, new intake and all that but hopefully down the road if my brother comes out and visits we'll make a video together on how to street tune your car and kind of work the fuel map in Honda. Anyways let's move on to handling. So the coilovers I have on the car are Megan Racing. They're fully adjustable dampening ride height. Very nice and a night and day difference from the Skunk 2 Pro series. I have a video that I did when I swapped them in and comparing the two. But anyways, I have a true heart upper control arm with adjustable camber. The reason I went with that is because hard race was way on back order when I wanted that. And the tubular design is kind of the strongest design you can get for suspension stuff. And underneath I have a innovative traction bar. This is like one of the best ones you can get on the market and is very budget friendly. The main thing about it is it has a solid mounting point here. It doesn't have a heim joint. That is one of the biggest issues with traction bars especially if you get a cheap one then your wheel will rock back and forth inside the wheel well which you do not want at all so highly recommend innovative traction bar front brakes are just the stock efsi brakes nothing special i do plan on upgrading them eventually but also a side note the axles i'm running in the car are dc axles dc integra axles big no-no back in the day and no one knew what they're talking about but Everyone said you had to run DA axles in an EF if you're swapping it. You do not. Um, as long as you're running the same half shaft for the axle you're using, you're good to go. And on a SI, all you have to do is pop out. Um, there's a ring on the back of the hub where the axle goes in. You pop that out and the axle slides right in. You don't even have to swap the steering knuckle out or anything. This is all stock. But if you have like a HF CRX or a DX model EF hatch, or any of the other models, you do have to swap the knuckle out for an EFSI, um, EX sedan, or a DA Integra knuckle. But the thing with the DA Integra, um, it, it has a different height to it or whatever, so it messes up the geometry of the stock suspension. It works, but the suspension doesn't, um, I guess, function the way it's supposed to from the factory. Moving on to the rear of the car, same coilovers, obviously. Skunk 2 lower control arms. Hard race upper control arm with adjustable camber and hard race adjustable toe. And then for the trailing arm bushings themselves, they're PCI um, spherical bushings. The reason I went with these is one, they're a lot stiffer, and two, the you can see the up arrow, they're designed to go a certain way. So when you lower a car, it changes the geometry of the suspension. Uh, quite a bit and this offsets the front of it so the geometry stays the same as it should with that space being up there instead of directly in the middle and the rear disc conversion on the car is off of a DC Integra so this was also one of the big no-nos back in the day everyone said you had to use DA Integra rear trailing arms for the rear disc conversion but you do not and one thing I forgot to mention about the rear disc conversion when I head up in the air the DC Integra E-brake cables actually work in the EF perfectly fine. And 
there they are running all the way up through. We just, I don't have the bracket in right there because I never got one. It works completely fine, perfect, everything works. So the myth is busted. And the main reason I went with the DC rather than the DA rear disc conversion is because the DA rear disc conversion sets the rear track off a half inch each side of the car, which makes the rear of the car more stable than the front, which you do not want, especially in a front wheel drive car because you want the rear end to rotate around the corners. If you have the rear end more stable than the front, then when you turn hard into a corner, it's gonna wanna push more through the corner. And I forgot to mention the front and rear sway bar are just the stock Civic SI ones that came on the car. So my current wheel and tire setup is just temporary. I had N-key RPF ones on it with RE71R tires. They were 16 by seven. They're just too tall for the car. So I just went with these until I can afford Cozy K1 wheels. But anyways, these are Koenig Hypergram 15 by seven and a half inch wide, 35 millimeter offset. And the tires are just like sporty all season tires. The Kumo Estada PA31, and they are 205.50 R15. I got the set pretty cheap used, so that's why I have this set up. The tires aren't really that sticky, but they are decent tires in general, but obviously not as good as the RE71R tires or whatever else I'm going to do on the next setup. And these wheels are very lightweight, really nice looking wheel, but I just don't really want to trust them on a track under very hard braking, heat, and all that. I just, I know the history behind the, the wheel company and it's cool history, but I don't know, I've, I don't know anything about them like durability wise. So I'm just gonna play it safe and get Cozy K1 wheels and go from there. So next I'm just gonna throw the car back on the ground, go over the interior really quick, and then kinda go over the future plans of the car. All right, so interior, nothing special. Just an energy wheel with a quick release. I have the gauge pod set up here. Eventually gonna get like an oil pressure gauge as well, but I've plastic welded this to the back of the um, center console here. And obviously my car is gutted. So I took the sound deadening out. I got rid of unnecessary brackets like the for the rear seat and stuff. I still gotta cut some more weight here and there but nothing too extravagant and then probably the most i guess intricate exterior slash interior mod was the sunroof plug my brother and i made this out of a sheet of aluminum and i just recently kind of like last year i made the rest of the brackets for this i have a whole video on it and kind of explaining how we did this because i didn't video the process but i have some pictures and whatnot i definitely talk too much in the video but i just trying to explain how to do this simply because I, it's one of my pet peeves when people just slap a piece of aluminum over the hole and then rivet through the roof. It's just like, you know, why? It's so simple to do this. It came out very nice. And yeah, I almost forgot about the exterior. I'll go over the exterior real quick because I do get questions here and there about it as well. So first, the most simple thing, the front lip. It's actually a Civic Wagon lip. They sent me the wrong lip when I ordered it off eBay. And I just kind of cut it here and on the other side and it fit just stretched it a tiny bit like it it fit really snug but it I, overall i love it and it's a little more square than a lot of the other lips i see they have like a big chin on them and i like this flatter look a lot better so my fenders i spaced out because even with them rolled i was still hooking my tire on the inside and just shredding the outside of my tire so i ended up having to put a spacer down here at the bottom. It's actually just a hood spacer and just unbolting it right here where the little tab is behind the um, behind the door. Just unbolted all of it and spaced it out at the bottom. It gave me just enough to it pull the fender out like that. Just give it enough angle where it doesn't grab anymore. Eventually I do want to cut the fender here, put that back in and then just leave the top spaced out like that. Well, eventually I want the Osaka JDM wide fenders that are made out of fiberglass, but your boy broke, so we doing it on a budget. Also, I rolled the rear quarter panels because they were hitting as well. So my rear spoiler is just the eBay one. The guy that made them, or at least sold them, 
doesn't sell them anymore, or at least hasn't in the past few years. And this is like my favorite one ever. I actually heard about it through Garage Bill Honda's because he has one on his car. But it's a really nice fiberglass wing that actually bolts to the factory holes. It's not one of those lick em, stick em, 3M tape ones. So this is like my favorite wing ever. But unfortunately, I don't think you can get them anymore. And lastly, my rear bumper. Just a stock bumper that I cut. You get better aerodynamics and better airflow from out of underneath the car. And I cut up the metal, the actual metal bumper itself to cut a bunch of weight. I mean, I, I, I don't know how much weight I actually cut, but it was significant. And I just like the look. Really mean look from the rear end of the car. Especially having my custom exhaust, you can see the rear suspension very well from the back of the car. So some of the future plans and the things that I need for the car right now are the dang rockers. I keep getting backed out on the rockers. Oh my goodness, it is so stressful and frustrating. I just want my rockers done so I can paint the car. I have the panels already. I have everything. Like, I just need someone to weld them in. I keep getting backed out on. It's frustrating because it's the only thing on the car I cannot do myself. So I need the rockers done so I can paint it. And then probably going to do a bolt-in cage at this point because I can't even get my dang rockers done. Seat, like a racing seat and a harness just to hold me in the car better. And it's just... Just safety stuff is actually my priority right now. And then eventually I want to do Lexan windows, get a K-Tune shifter because it's just much more comfortable, short shifter, and you can adjust it right next to the steering wheel. I had one of my EK Civic and I loved it. And then relocate the battery to the rear of the car. Obviously there's much more things that I plan on doing to the car as well, but those are just kind of the main things that will kind of bring this car together. And the safety things are kind of my main um, focus right now but they're also the most expensive things. Anyways, that's going to be it for this video. I just figured it would be a good day for my overview video because I've been asked quite a few times by people to go over the car and it was bad weather today. So yeah, there's my Kanjo EF Civic. And if you want to support the channel, I have these two stickers available right now. I have a pinned post on my Instagram. Just inbox me and let me know what you want. And I just got the blanks in this week for hoodies and t-shirts. So going to be doing a test print on some of them and then after that they'll be available so i'll post on my instagram as well as the next youtube video for how to get those so if you want to stay up to date subscribe to the channel if you like the video i appreciate a like and then subscribe to my instagram if you want to stay up to date on there as well which is kanjo underscore brothers and also to find how to order the merchandise but anyways thanks for watching